while we were in the middle of the discussion about Intel's ARC GPUs, AMD compared its RX 6500M GPU to one of the budget Intel ARC GPUs. Not only that, but it is also going to launch another RX 6000 series graphics card. Also, we have a big spec leak of one of the RX 7000 series GPUs that is supposedly featuring over 15,000 stream processors. But we have even more astonishing story about the RTX 3090 Ti which now has been exposed by its PCB. We will talk about that later, so stay till the end and subscribe if you are a hardcore PC enthusiast. The first news is about the performance comparison between one of the Intel Arc GPUs, that is the Arc A370M which Intel launched for the gaming laptops and the AMD's RX 6500M mobile GPU. If you remember, Intel showed their own gaming benchmark in the stream which shows that Arc A370M is able to provide over 60 FPS at 1080p medium settings. AMD just shook these numbers by comparing it with the RX 6500M. It posted a benchmark comparison on Twitter, claiming that RX 6500M is almost twice as fast as the A370M, which is making things worse for Intel. Although Intel is very new to this game, but having this much performance gap will definitely put Intel much behind in the GPU market. However, there are a few things that are needed to be considered. The first one is that AMD is claiming that it tested the RX 6500M on the same medium settings at 10 which Intel used for A370M. However, these settings might not be the exact ones used by Intel. Some graphical settings do make a big change in FPS, like if we put everything to medium but switch off the anti-aliasing completely. The result will be significantly different. Also, we don't know in which areas AMD benchmarked the GPU, because those also matter a lot as some areas in games are more intensive than the others, putting higher loads on GPU. But still, even if the numbers on the graph are looking exaggerated, I do think that RX 65 M should be at least 30% faster than the A370M and if we go by that this would indicate a similar story with the desktop GPUs which means that 6500XT might come up significantly faster than the A380M. If this happens then the rumored price of $200 for the Intel Arc A380 won't do any good to Intel unless it prices it around $150. Next, we have specs leak on the RX 7950 XT graphics card based on the RDNA 3 architecture. If you remember, in one of my previous videos, I talked about the flagship RX 7000 series GPUs, where the 7950 XT stands as the second most powerful GPU in the series. According to the leaked specs by Greymon on Twitter, the 7950 XT is featuring 15,360 stream processors, 32 GB of VRAM, 2.5 GHz of clock speed, and a 512 MB of Infinity Cache. However, the power consumption is looking higher than what was previously rumored. The RX 7950 XT is supposedly going to use workgroup processors instead of compute units. And Olrak29 underscore made a block diagram of how this GPU is going to use dual graphics core dies and a single multi-cache die. Here, each GCD will have a shader engine, which will have dual shader arrays. Each array has 5 WGPs, each comprising of 8 SIMD32 units, with 32 ALUs or shaders for each SIMD32 unit. In simple words, we have 32 multiplied by 8 cores in each WGP, that equals to 256 cores per WGP. Now, there are a total of 60 WGPs in both GCDs, which translates to 15,360 stream processors. So, this GPU is definitely a monster because the flagship RX 6900 XT only has 5,120 stream processors. This means that theoretically, we are at least looking at more than 2.5 times the performance of 6900 XT, which also means that the RX 7970 XT is going to be at least 3 times faster than the 6900 XT. The last one is even more interesting. It has been a couple of days since Nvidia released the RTX 3090 Ti and we have the pics of the PCBs of some of the RTX 3090 Ti GPUs from Zotac, EVG and MSI. As noticed by Twitter user Charlie, the 3090 Ti PCBs from Zotac and EVG have some missing components that makes them one step behind being an RTX 1490. According to the PCB design, the AD102 and the GA102 are pin compatible which will make AIB's job easy for making RTX 4000 GPUs. Here the Zotac 3090 Ti Amp Extreme Hollow PCB has missing VRM components as well as unused power connector slot for a 16-pin PCI Gen 5 connector that is going to be the standard on the RTX 4000 series GPUs. This is the same story on the EVG RTX 3090 Ti for the Win 3 Ultra GPU. Now interestingly, even the reference RTX 3090 Ti PCB has missing components. This analysis is even confirmed by Igor Slab after introspecting the MSI RTX 
3090 Ti Supremax Edition which although doesn't have much missing components but still has a 16 pin power connector that is designed to support 600 watts which is going to be the default TDP for the RTX 1490. Hopefully this will allow AIBs to produce the RTX 4000 series GPUs faster and we might have immediate availability of these cards at fair prices but I'm more excited to see how far Intel can go with their first ever GPU family. If you want to know more about the ARC GPUs, click right here. This video covers the 5 laptop ARC GPUs as well as the first ever glimpse of an actual desktop ARC GPU. Till then goodbye and I will see you next time.